What is going on, you guys? My name is Hugh, and welcome to Project Betty, episode four. We got a lot of stuff planned for you guys, and maybe you might learn something from this episode because there's some new things that I have never seen people do. But I want you guys to do me a favor. Make sure to watch the other episodes leading up to this point. If you have not seen episodes two, three, or one, I'll leave the playlist down in the description below so you guys can get caught up with what's going on with this project. But if you're already caught up, then you're good to go. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. Hear the intro, Mike. So to start this episode off, I wanted to do another performance mod for her, and that is doing an exhaust system. So what I got was a Borla Axelback exhaust. And I've been staring at this thing for maybe a year. And true story, I was looking at this exhaust before I even started thinking about getting the front bumper. But at the time, it was the budget that I was at. So I couldn't afford the exhaust, at least the full system. So I was just staring at just that piece and I wanted to know what I could do. And there wasn't a lot of like information as far as videos go demonstrating just that back piece there's just people who put that on and then deleted the resonator but never the stock system with the uh, uh, Borla axle back on there so let's go ahead and jump back in time to when I installed that exhaust that was a while ago actually that was I think at the beginning of the year before I had anything set up in that garage which you'll see here in a minute if you guys are interested in any of the stuff that I've added to the car as far as parts go, be sure to check the description for that little grocery list if you guys are interested in anything that I've done to the car. Alright, you know the drill. Let's go back in time and install that Borla exhaust. Okay, now we're in the garage. Uh, I wanted to get an exhaust that wasn't like super loud, but it was going to give the car a much more sportier sound. Nothing that's going to be like, you know, spitting everywhere. I went ahead and went with... A Borla S-Type style exhaust. I think this is called the Tori exhaust, if I'm not mistaken. All I did was just an axle Mac exhaust, because um, that's all I really wanted. I didn't want to do a full-on system here. I wanted to give her some sound, but nothing that's going to be really loud and obnoxious. And I've been waiting a long time for this thing. And now we're going to finally throw this bad boy in. And I know there's a bunch of YouTube videos of people testing it and seeing how it sounds, but I want to hear what it sounds like in person. I've never heard this exhaust here. <laughs> also, I want to give a huge shout out to Borla themselves that gave me some really cool merch, decal stickers, which I love collecting, as you guys know. And I got a nice little baseball cap here. I could definitely rock this just for this video here just to keep my hair out of my face. I'll leave this in the link in the description below. It'll be at the top of the list there in my um, little grocery bag down in the description. Without further ado, I'm going to stop yapping and get to working. Toolbox. Take one. I got the buddy Xander with me this time. We're going to hear it for the place. So we're going to hear it for the first time. Cold start. Probably. Yee. Yeah. Oh, shit. Hi, Betty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, yay. One. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. 
not much. It's really good though, and it's not droning. Really? It's not droning inside? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, a good thing. Check it and make sure. The steering wheel is too short. <laughs> nope, that's quiet. It's not droning? Not droning at all. Which is good. Better than a muffler delete. <laughs> Better than a muffler delete, for sure. Alrighty guys, let's go head back to the office to move on to the next part of the project. So after I installed that boiler exhaust, a lot of the carbon that they used to build these exhausts, it started to dissipate and it started getting better and better and better. And I was like, oh, ho, ho. Uh, the more I drove around and daily the car, it started opening up the way that exhaust sounds. And it's super, super sick. It wasn't loud, it wasn't raspy, it was, it was just, it was perfect. No drone whatsoever. It was like the cleanest sound I've ever heard, but it wasn't enough. And I did tell myself after I installed that uh, axle back, I kind of want to leave this. I don't want to make it, you know, a full exhaust. Well, here it comes three months later, we made it a full exhaust. <laughs> so, but I didn't just get any full ex uh, exhaust system. I actually got it from a company called Globe Run Exhaust. Never heard of them before. They were on eBay. Um, they were selling pretty much just the rest of the piping from the axle back to the first cat in the car, the first Cadillac converter in the car. And I was looking at it going, wow, that actually looks super clean. It's not like a weird like Frankenstein build. It was like the cleanest build I've ever seen. I remember after I saw that, that I looked up the blueprint for my exhaust, like the original factory one. It's literally like pipe, 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 pipe. Fat muffler. Pipe, 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 pipe. And then your cat. I was like, Ew, <laughs> it's like the worst design ever. I think it was even my buddy Xander that suggested, well, why don't you change, why don't you just cut off the resonator? And I was like, uh-uh, I'm not cutting anything on this car. Panels, nothing. I want to keep it all clean, no cutting of anything, minus the drill parts where we had to get the snaps on the car. Yeah, that was a nightmare. Definitely give those guys some support. They actually don't seem to get a lot of business from that particular car. I know they get a lot of business from other cars like Fords and uh, Ford Mustangs and Camaros and all that stuff, but never for the Veloster. I never saw any reviews. So if you guys want this exhaust, I'll leave it down in the description below. Go help support that company. I think they make some really, really cool systems, all handmade, all hand crafted and everything. And it's super, super clean. So let's go ahead and jump back in time again. So maybe a couple months ago, uh, I don't want to say about two or three months ago of when we installed the rest of the exhaust. All right, so we made it to the garage. That was terrible. <laughs> we made it. We got to walk five hours to the garage. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so we made it to the garage. I'm freaking starving. I'm dehydrated. It's been a desert <laughs> the whole way here. Florida later. <laughs> so we're actually going to do a little experiment here, but before we... So before we put the rest of the exhaust on, we're going to do a little experiment here, mainly just a sound test. So we're going to put the original stock muffler back on the car again. We're going to see how that sounds. And then I'm going to put the Borla exhaust back on. And then once we get the Borla on, then we're going to put the entire thing on. But let's go ahead and get started with the sound test. So here's what the stock exhaust sounds like. Okay, so now here's what the Borla exhaust, or just the axle back part sounds like, with the stock piping on. I hope that got captured. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and put the Globe Run exhaust on and finish the rest of it with the Borla axle back on. And, uh, Open headers? Maybe. 
We'll see, maybe open headers, but that'll be in the future. We'll see what we can do today. Ow. Did I hit you? <laughs> Did I? Yeah. On the finger? Damn, that's so fast bitch. Damn, boy, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Dead me. <laughs> dead me. <laughs> You know it's gonna fall on you. Oh, I know. I got a, I got a big ass chest, so I'm not worried about it hurting me. I got a big ass. I got a big ass and gig ass. I'm gonna chew bubble gum. <laughs> and I'm all out of gum. I got a big ass and kick ass and chew bubble gum. There it goes. Dump! <laughs> she just scared the crap out of me. I don't know why it's I was like, ah, I'm dying! <laughs> it's a whole lot of heat shield. It's a whole lot of something, that's for sure. What a mess. Here's the question. Here's the question. Do you want to keep some of the heat shield or not? Nah? Uh, no. Definitely not. Okay, good. We're good. I don't think we need, I don't think we need any of that. Okay. Extra metal floating in there. Yeah! We just took out the whole thing and oh. we tried it out without any pipes. It sounds... <laughs> but it's too much for me. It's not what I want to go for. So let's put the rest of it in, please. <laughs> Alright, so we got everything in and it took maybe about 20 minutes, not that long ago. We did have to adjust the pipe where it connects because for some reason it didn't line up very well. But we took like a little rubber mallet to it and now it's fine. Um, it is coming loose a little bit on the factory little rubber bushing, the exhaust holder. Um, so I might go out and see if I can get a smaller one, just the hole in the bottom to see if it'll hold it better. But other than that, we shook it around and it's, it's not going to go anywhere, I don't think. What do you think? Is it gonna be louder? Is it gonna be more? Oh, it's definitely gonna be louder. More tone, maybe? One, there's no cat now. Yeah. Two, you have a much, much, much smaller resonator. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna crack a little bit more, too. Really? You think so? You yeah. think when it warms up, it'll probably start getting some noise? Nothing, not, not, like a, not like a can of rice, maybe? Mm, we'll see.
mask or anything that would fall out. Ugh. No, we should be okay. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, it's gonna stink a little bit because, you know, fresh exhaust smell. And fresh carbon. Yeah. So, yeah, not too bad, actually. So, it did do a little bit of a cat delete back here, which is perfect. Um, I might fix this little rubber piece back here, see how it's kind of barely hanging in. Because it looks like the pipe's a little smaller, but that's not a big deal. As long as I don't hit a big bump or something, it won't, it won't come out. Why am I so saturated? It still needs to be broken in a little bit, so if I drive it around for a couple of weeks, uh, the exhaust will start to open up a little bit more, because right now it's got a lot of carbon built up into it, like any first exhaust system you get. Hopefully next couple of weeks, I'll give you guys an update uh, once this episode is released, and we'll see how all that sounds within a, like maybe a month or two uh, use of it. So we got the exhaust done, let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this project. Oh my god, that exhaust sounds so good! And that exhaust gets way, way better over time. The more I drove the car around, the more it kind of picked up all the carbon out of there and just <laughs> spat it all out, the more that exhaust just opened up. And my god, you should hear what she sounds like now, man. It's, it is crazy. <laughs> Especially by the way this Veloster engine was built, I think the Veloster and some of the other four-cylinder Kias, they all sound deep, they sound rumbly, they don't sound like anywhere near some of the four-cylinders that you get on the cars nowadays. They sound super unique. But this Frank, this weird Frankenstein system that we have with two different companies, just an axle back Borla exhaust with this Globe Run exhaust system to complete the rest of it, it just, it just changes the way this car sounds. It sounds more like a sports car, which is what it's supposed to be. Hyundai, you should take some notes here, bruh. But yeah, that car sounds super, super, super sick. And you'll be seeing her a lot in some vlogs. I'll be able to capture more of what this exhaust sounds like. Fully opened up, no carbon built up in it. It's all super clean, super burbly. <clears throat> so after all that, Later on in the year, I think somewhere in the middle of summertime or something like that, August, July, whatever, I kept looking in the rear. Those rear seats in the car. Whoever sits in the rear seats? Most of my friends, Xander, Ryan, and Ryan, were all like six foot one, five nine, something like that. We're all tall dudes. And I thought about it for a while, like nobody really sits back there. Like I don't carry a lot of stuff. Most of the stuff is just cargo. Like I would fold them down and put stuff in there. But other than that, nobody sits back there because it's it's just it's kind of a low hanging roof so you bunk you bunk your head on the glass back there i did something not many other Velocity owners have done and that is deleting those rear seats because one they were super heavy and two nobody sits back there like they're just kind of unnecessary i don't use them they're just in the way i'd rather have a nice full hatchback trunk to put more stuff for like storage or carrying things around i deleted those rear seats and actually sitting behind you behind the camera they're, they're used as little bing bags so let's jump back in time and take those nasty, unuseful rear seats out, shall we? So we're back in the garage. Um, let's go ahead and get cracking on those back seats, shall we? Alrighty, so we got everything out of the trunk here. So I don't know how these seats are going to come out. I'm actually all by myself today because I'm going to try and see if I can tackle this by myself. But I actually went ahead and bought the mats here or basically just a roll of that interior car fabric. And we're gonna be layering it pretty much if there's like a gap here. I don't know if this is all carpeting throughout the entire thing here. Cause if not, then I could just use that floor mat stuff and then layer it here actually. So if we're taking that out, it'll kind of cover the metal or whatever's underneath these seats and kind of blend it all in. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how to get these seats out of here. Got it. So pretty much this seat, these seats are held in by, it looks like this one bracket, which is back behind here that I just took out. And then it's also just hooked into this little thing in the, 
firewall there. Literally the only thing that's holding this, you know, butt seat down is these couple of screws. And then there's something else in there. So there's like three screws, that, that, and then that's it, it's free, look at that. It's completely free. Right, so that's pretty much what we're dealing with. That's not too bad. I mean, it's not much of a steep, like, slope in there. So I could probably build a uh, a uh, platform, perhaps. Like, build a little platform to raise it up so then everything is even. It's only down by a very small bit, and the rest of it is just kind of flat. It's not too terribly bad. I think I could be able to work with that. Um, I think what I need for here is maybe some plywood or something light so that I can kind of take these seatbelt pieces out and then just layer it flat. I think the next thing we're gonna do is probably take those two seatbelt pieces out and see if I can remove these seatbelts here. I think that's about it. There's really not much left to do. Maybe I can take these brackets out for now until I can use them again. But let's go ahead and take those seatbelt pieces out to start with. Ow! Me my fat ass legs. Let's move on and see what the next thing we got to do is. Oh, excuse me. So I went ahead and laid everything out uh, and see what it was going to look like. And wow, it looks so much nicer in there, man. A little bit of weight reduction too, because those seats were really heavy when I was taking them out. It might not seem like much, but it's just the foam that's in those seats is really hefty. So it does take out a little bit of weight in there which is nice and the mat will stay the thing underneath it will stay the only thing we got to finish is this piece also anybody want a couch i can literally turn this into a couch what do you think maybe i can uh, attach all these pieces together and make a couch out of it or something for the room because i think what i'm going to wind up doing is just uh like flattening it the best way i can so just to cover up the mess here I've already got this side done. I've actually tucked it underneath all the plastic and I put this screw back where it's supposed to go so it holds it in. So this whole side is all tucked in all behind this plastic. This I'm actually gonna keep because I might use that if I'm like loading something heavy so I can be able to latch something onto that. And that's, that's pure metal, that's like right on the frame. So that could definitely come in handy. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pretty much adhesive it or glue it to the ground here. So it pretty much just covers all the all the nastiness under there, you know? So that at least looks like carpeting, you know, when you look at it. Alright, so I cleaned up everything and I got the rest of the carpet tucked in and I went ahead and just tucked it underneath this uh, stock fabric piece. That way the rest of it kind of blends in nice and neat and also underneath here so you don't see some weird edges. Um, I did went ahead and put the plastic piece back on up here so that that's bolted in and also I went ahead and adhesive the mat up top just mainly from here all the way over so then that way it won't move and if you put stuff down it's not gonna get all creasy and deflated and stuff 
All right, so now we're back in the future again. I really wanted to delete those rear seats because they're just useless. All my friends are too tall. It actually took out maybe about 30 or 40 pounds, which is not a lot, but it is kind of a lot because of how they built these seats. The foam in them was really thick. They were super comfortable, don't get me wrong. Like when you're sitting back there, it's not bad, but when you see how it's built, they put so much extra stuff in it that just weighs the car down. So I really had to get those things out of there. Not because they're just useless, but because there's some weight reduction there. And your boy needs to take some weight reduction, seriously. But something was missing. Now, I knew, I do love the original Veloster front seats. They look super cool, especially with the logo on them. It's like embroidered on or whatever. But I actually wanted to upgrade those a bit so that it kind of matches the theme of sports car for, for this particular build. So I actually went out one day to an auto parts shop and I was just grabbing some stuff for another project like some 3M tape and paint and I noticed these two black racing seats sitting on top of the shelf and I asked one of the guys I'm like hey what's the story with those are those for sale or something they're like yeah they've actually been there since 2013 what apparently nobody's bought these seats because some people said that they were too expensive or they looked uncomfortable because of the way they were designed. But I saw some potential, you know me. I will see potential in things that people don't really care about. So I went ahead and got those seats, and then the only thing I had to get extra was the seat mount to help line it up with the rest of the factory bolts where everything uh, uh, bolted onto. The cool thing about those seats is that it actually came with sliders so you can move the seat forward and backwards. Not many aftermarket seats have that little uh, part with it. You'd have to get the seat the sliders and then the brackets you gotta get it all separately but i was lucky to get these at a really good price for pretty much just those two components put together the seat and the sliders i uh, it turned out great so let's jump back in time and throw those racing seats in the car shall we Who? Oh, all right so now that we got the rear done these are really good i like the color just plain old black i've already put some nice leather conditioner from the chemical guys on here and it just shined it up a lot more. I think also the reason why I went with these or seats like these is because I don't like people who put their logo smack dab in the middle of a seat, either here, up here, or on the back. So I wanted it to be super clean. I don't want to flash any logos or any company brands. At least you get a seat that comes with brackets. So you don't have to worry about, you know, lining everything up and trying to find brackets that fit the seat. It's already pre-done for you. And you save yourself a lot of time and money right there. So let's go ahead and get that stock seat out of there and throw this bad boy in, test fit everything, make sure it, everything lines up, and we'll see what these bad boys look like. I'm excited. I can't believe how heavy that seat is. This looks like nothing compared to this seat. Hyundai, what are you doing, man? <sighs> All right, so the next thing we gotta do is um, I gotta transfer these sensors off of this seat into this one, which shouldn't be too difficult. I'm gonna flip these both, I think, this way so that the seat's like that. And then I'm just gonna transfer everything to the new one. We definitely need to keep those sensors. If the, even if the seat does not have airbags, I gotta make sure the sensors are still reconnected. This seat weighs like about 100 pounds, man. This is Oh, okay, I'm exaggerating. It's like 30 pounds or something, but wow.
Alrighty guys, as you can see, it's a little bit dark outside because I have been waiting for a package to be able to finish this seat up um, and it didn't even get here until like six something in the afternoon. But I'm about to reveal what it is I'm gonna be using to help mount the seat um, where the factory holes are. And that is ugh, this thing. It's just really a custom made uh, seat mount bracket, whatever you wanna call it. Um, Cause you can see all these four different slits here on each corner that will actually help with seats that are either wider or thinner uh, in which in this case this one is going to be thinner than the stock seat that's in the car right now uh, i think it's kind of a nice way to help you know put any sort of aftermarket seat in this particular car because they don't make a lot of these sort of brackets or mounts um, for the veloster i know they make it for like the genesis coupe but i actually got this off of ca auto parts which i'll leave a link in the description below if you guys are interested of doing the same thing that i'm doing um, just putting some sort of aftermarket seats in your cars uh, so let's go ahead and start trying to map out how we can put the seat and, and like center it where these little slits are it should be pretty easy i actually have a couple of bolts laying around so let's slap them together and see how it looks Alrighty guys, the seat is in. This looks pretty sick. Now it does sit a little bit lower than the stock seat, which is okay because I'm like six foot one. Maybe later on in the future I'll design like a little elevation system, like a height control, just like the factory seats used to have. Yeah, I mean, everything works. It's pretty sturdy. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. I got all the bolts screwed in. It mounted perfectly to the factory mounts, which is great for actually a really well-made bracket it looks really cool dude i need to put some leather conditioner on this so i can kind of make it look a little bit nicer um but yeah like the seat belt goes right over it i don't have to reach back all the way just grab it right here and pull it plug it in the seat belt uh plug is still a little adjustable so as i'm driving sometimes the seat belt gets tight on me so this is still adjustable and it slides So now we gotta go over to the other side, but I'm gonna catch you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna get some rest and shower up a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and tackle the other side. So here we are, we're at the very end of this episode, but before we end it off, I actually want to give you guys some bonus footage, just because I had to make you guys wait an extra month, because I had to wait for some parts to come in, and all of that, I had to have time to sit down and edit everything. So think of it as a thank you from me to you, because you guys have been super supportive of the Project Betty series, both on the YouTube channel and on the Instagram. Like I said, if you haven't been following my Instagram, there's going to be behind the scenes pictures and little video clips of whatever we're going to do for the next Betty episode which I got one more episode. 
for Project Betty. Just one more. It's a very short one, but it's going to be a mod that we really, really, really need to do. And it's probably something we should have done years ago. So the bonus footage I have for you guys is actually me working on the hood vents and deleting the rear reflectors in the car. And pretty much what I did is that I took the rear reflectors and I actually made some grill pieces out of it, out of the leftover grill um, bits and stuff that I have when I was doing the front bumper a while ago. And it actually turned out really cool. It gave the car a little bit more character, a little bit more style. I know I got way too many vents on this car now, which is a little unnecessary. But for the way I wanted to design this car, based on the drawing and my visual idea, I had to try it out. I had to see what it looked like. So here you go. Here's some bonus footage of me building the hood vents and changing out the old ugly reflectors for these nice grill pieces. Ooh, let's jump back in time and get it done, huh? So that is it for episode 4. I had to add a little bit of extra bonus footage of when I did the hood vents and the rear reflector vents on the car just because 
I wanted to add a little something extra because I had to keep you guys waiting. Um, I was going to launch this episode last month, but unfortunately I still had to wait for parts to come in due to the pandemic going around. But it's okay, we got it out. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe you'll learn something. So if you ever want to try these mods yourself, go do it. There's no limit to what you can do to your project, either it's a car or a costume. You can do whatever you want because as long as it's in here, it'll become a reality. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to give it a fat thumbs up. And don't forget to check out the rest of the episodes down in the description below. I'll leave the entire playlist for you guys to watch. Also, make sure you look in the description below. There will be a grocery list of everything that I've done to the car, minus the seats. I'll try to find like a similar pair that look like the ones that I have. But regardless, they're not going to be the exact ones. But you guys can pretty much use any seats you want for this car, as long as you get those seat mounts, which I'll leave down there too for you. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you goons in the final episode.